The Beatles' Get Back by Peter Jackson may be the most thorough, even tiresome, correction in film history. It's also a fascinating investigation of the creative process, with some of popular music's most creative brains sketching out tunes under time constraints. However, at three sections and about seven and a half hours, that's a lot of exploration. Jackson does everything big. Of course, it will never be enough for Beatle Completists. I make no apology for my admiration for the band, but numerous trial runs of Get Back or I've Got a Feeling become less enlightening and more tiresome after a while. The result of what they've worked on, on the other hand, is fantastic. A rave-up rendition of I've Got a Feeling during the film's climactic rooftop performance is fantastic. So let's dive into today's video in which we will talk about The Beatles' Get Back, an exclusive deep dive into Peter Jackson's revelatory new movie. But before we begin, please subscribe to our channel. It is one of two takes of the song that they perform on the rooftop. Get Back is available in three different versions. We got a shortened version of the small concert, the band's final public performance in Let It Be. The new film tells the entire story, but it's a little redundant, the same as the remainder of the film. Robert Ebert once said that no good movie is too lengthy, and no poor movie is too short. The Beatles' Get Back puts that notion to the test. Jackson employs technology to make the 52-year-old film appear fresh. The flick looks fantastic. You'd never guess the footage was 52 years old. Jackson uses the same technology he used to great effect in They Shall Not Grow Old, a documentary on World War I, to render the video remarkably colorful. And the music is timeless. If you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button, comment down below, and subscribe for more Beatles content. The Beatles commissioned Michael Lindsay Hogg to direct a film about the making of their new album in 1969. There were plans for a television special, but they fell through. After the disengagement of The Beatles, most famously known as The White Album, the record intended to be a return to simplicity. In the subsequent 1970 film, Let It Be, it became a sad portrayal of dysfunction and disillusion. John Lennon and Yoko Ono were almost ghoulishly close in the studio. George Harrison was irritated and irritable. Ringo Starr was, well, Ringo. And Paul McCartney was the antagonist. That was the story back then, and it's what Jackson set out to disrupt with 60 hours of film and 150 hours of audio. At times, it's a clumsy try. In The Beatles' Get Back, we see multiple instances of Lennon and McCartney laughing and horsing around in the studio, clearly having a good time. But then, there will be a scene in which someone tells Lennon that he and McCartney aren't really writing together anymore, that they're not getting along all that well, and that maybe something can bring them closer together. And he'll agree with you. It's impossible to see what they're talking about in Jackson's happy happy joy joy version. However, it is not impossible. The members of the band do not truly shed the versions of themselves seen in Let It Be. Things are just a little more subtle this time. In The Beatles' Get Back, McCartney comes across as less of a tyrant and more of someone who feels compelled to assume the role of leader. Lennon, who is considerably happier this time around, complains from time to time that they are spending too much time working out McCartney's songs at the expense of his, but there are no major squabbles. Ringo is still Ringo, and likely will remain so in perpetuity. But Harrison is the most irritated and offended by McCartney. Harrison, the ostensibly quiet one, is shockingly frank at times in his critique of Lennon and McCartney's songs and music. Harrison resigned during the filming of Let It Be. This time, we witness it. Harrison famously disappeared during the sessions and did not return for several days. He simply stands up and goes out, declaring, I'm leaving the band immediately. What was the reaction? If he doesn't come back by Tuesday, Lennon says, we'll get Eric Clapton. Ouch. Harrison eventually returns after several band trips to his home. McCartney moderates the obsessive controlling drive, and they continue. The appearance of Billy Preston for a visit, however, completely alters the mood. They inform him that they are working on some tracks that could benefit from the services of a keyboard player. Would he like to take a seat? 
He would, and he does, and it instantly improves everyone's mood. His contributions to songs like Get Back and Let It Be are immense. For Beatles fans, Ono's presence in the studio is sometimes a source of dispute. In this film, McCartney defends her presence, claiming that she and Lennon are in love and want to be together. What's the point? It'll be such a wonderful humorous thing in 50 years, McCartney predicts. They split up because Yoko sat on an amplifier. Indeed, Ono appears brighter than in Let It Be, occasionally bopping to songs. Such segments are intriguing, illuminating, and possibly revelatory, but they're smack dab in the heart of everything else. It's all too much, as Harrison sings. Even so, it's magical when McCartney sits down and pounds out the chords that open Let It Be. Last year, when Disney released a teaser for Get Back, meant to reassure eager fans after the project was delayed for a year due to COVID-19, the montage of never-before-seen footage showing Lennon gleefully horsing around the studio with McCartney, doing a comic version of Two of Us through clenched teeth, and Ono chatting warmly with McCartney's wife, Linda Eastman. Was Jackson cherry-picking quips to peddle a distorted history? Is it a whitewash? I don't think they'll feel that after seeing it, Jackson says, but I see where they're coming from. This does not match what you read in the literature. The Let It Be sessions were a bad moment for the Beatles, a turning point for their coming separation as Ono became a stumbling block between Lennon and the band, and Harrison attempted to break away, even quitting the Beatles at one point. Lennon hired manager Alan Klein to handle the band's commercial affairs after the recordings, while McCartney hired his father-in-law, attorney Lee Eastman, to challenge Klein's moves resulting in a nasty court battle that continued long after the band disbanded. Lennon criticized the Let It Be sessions, telling Rolling Stone, They wrote about Yoko looking terrible in the Let It Be film, but you sit through 60 sessions with the most big-headed, uptight individuals on earth and learn what it's like to be insulted just because you love someone. So, 48 years later, Apple CEO Jeff Jones and executive Jonathan Clyde invited Jackson to their London offices to discuss a traveling Beatles display incorporating unrelated historical videos. Jackson was asked to update ancient material using the same process he used to resurrect World War I films for the 2018 documentary They Shall Not Grow Old. Jackson was told that a second effort to create a documentary from the Let It Be rushes was in the works, but that the intended director had stepped down. Jackson cheered, so he raised his hand and said, If you just lost a filmmaker, I'm here. After reviewing Let It Be twice, Jackson realized he would tell a different story than most others. Jackson's film is more than a wonderful look into lost footage. Unlike Ron Howard's 2016 documentary, Eight Days a Week, The Touring Years, about the mid-60s period before the Beatles quit playing live, though it is that. It rewrites history. Though Get Back was created for modern eyes decades after the events, it stays true to the original's intent, which was to chronicle the band's comeback to live performance after they stopped playing concerts in 1966. When the Beatles approached director Michael Lindsay Hogg, the son of Irish star Geraldine Fitzgerald, to produce a series of promotional pictures for their 1968 single, he was 28 years old and the director of British pop music TV show Ready Steady Go. Lindsay Hogg gathered in a small audience, a mix of young people and regular folk, such as a village postman, to sing along to what would become a classic chorus for a Hey Jude film. The event rekindled the Beatles' desire to perform in public, and McCartney devised a plan to create a TV show featuring tape performances of new Beatles songs in front of a small audience. The performance would maintain a montage of behind-the-scenes rehearsal footage, all was the driving force behind the entire initiative. Lindsay Hogg adds, If this were a fake film about a fictional band, having one of the band members walk away at the conclusion of the first act, that'd be the ideal thing to write into a script, Jackson adds. So, strangely enough, these men are acting out their genuine lives. They weren't acting it out for a movie or a script, and it was the reality of their lives. And yet, in terms of these 21 days, it kind of oddly fits. Then there's the fictitious third act, when they're up on the roof playing against all odds. 
Fantastic. Jackson is aware of the delicate nature of a production in which he questions another filmmaker's creative decisions. In 2020, he visited with Lindsay Hogg in Los Angeles to demonstrate how his technology may change the footage. He showed me a comparison of my Let It Be video and the material. Lindsay Hogg adds, referring to how McCartney's hair appeared in the original and a single block of color, and now you can see every single strand of hair. Jackson claims that avoiding duplicate material from the first film was a vital and critical creative act. Even familiar sites would have different camera perspectives. One of our mantras is that Let It Be is one film, and our film is another, he explains, and we're trying not to replicate any footage with one or two little instances where we can't do anything else. But we're trying not to stomp on Let It Be's toes so that it remains a film with a purpose, and our film will be a complement to it. Jackson's film is likely to be the final illuminating document we'll see 51 years after the gang split up. It has a bittersweet power because it also captures their final official album. Fans and historians will certainly argue over whether Get Back is a rewrite or a corrective to history, but there is one thing that everyone wants. More Beatles. Look, this stuff's terrific. Paul commented to Jackson at one point, because at the end of the day, I'm a Beatles fan. Now that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Before you leave, tell us in the comments how important was the release of this film for the Beatles. Share your thoughts with us. We'll see you in the next video.